and every state needs to be critically informing their state population that the gatherings that we saw in Thanksgiving will lead to a surge. It will happen this week and next week. And we cannot go into the holiday season, Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, with this same kind of attitude that those those gatherings don't apply to me. They apply to everybody. Incoming, Klaus Schwab says we need to brace for yet another global crisis. And Bill Gates says, even with a vaccine, COVID isn't going anywhere. Stay afraid, America. Stay very afraid. I know you've lost your job, you're abusing alcohol, and they might even foreclose on your home. But not to worry, a stimulus check is coming your way. Plus, the most inclusive pope in history has included astronauts in this year's Vatican crash. Awesome! All that and more tonight from the editor's desk. Hello again, ladies and gentlemen, Michael Matt coming to you once again from the offices of the Remnant Newspaper. Just a little housekeeping tonight as we brace for the end of this year from hell. Am I right? Oh, man. It's been something else, yeah. Maybe 2021 will be 2020 fun. Have you ever thought about that? Oh, the rhyming. That rhyming, actually, to kick things off here. Here's the thing, friends. Uh, as you know, the Remnant is a physical newspaper as well as a video platform. And for the moment, we're still on YouTube. I don't know for how much longer, but we're still here. So don't forget, hit that like, because what does a like do? The like actually forces the algorithm to send our video out to like that. more of our subscribers. It really helps. Actually. really helps. Yeah, I'm told it really helps. So because obviously people are not seeing our videos as they once were, but uh, so far YouTube is tolerating us. But it really would help us if you hit that like. Uh, if we get thrown off YouTube, as we've been saying again and again, we're ready to move on, on the, for over to our, an entire new operating system over at Remnant TV, remnant-tv.com, which, again, has privately purchased content delivery networks all around the world. So it's pretty difficult for them to do anything about that, at least for the time being, unless they're going to just shut the Internet down on all of us terrible Christians, which I think is a ways off. So remnant-tv.com is the backup plan if we ever get thrown off by our friends here at YouTube. We're ready. We're prepared. You know, the thing is, it's kind of funny how God works. I mean, we've been expecting this for so many years. You know, we're a newspaper, and years ago people said, you got to get off that stupid newsprint thing. That's a dinosaur, man. You can't use that. And we stayed on it. We, I, I, we go to press every two weeks with a physical newspaper going off a web press. You can imagine how expensive that is. We stayed on it, and I'm really glad that we have because, uh, well, the news is tightening from the social, uh, the social media folks, and uh, we need to come up with alternatives. So my goal right now is pretty simple. Heading into 2021, it's real simple, in fact. We need to make sure that we can stay connected, right? And keep fighting. We can't rely on leftist social media anymore. We need to become the big boys. We need to pull ourselves up. We need to put our big boy pants on and come up with alternatives in instead of spending days, months, years, decades whining about what victims we are as Christians. I'm tired of being a victim. And so as I say, when it comes to YouTube, do whatever you're going to do, YouTube. I hope you let us hang out here, but we're building an alternative and it's going to work. It is working. It's fully functional right now. You see? We have to do this. We can't rely on them anymore. Why? Because the plan was always to reset the media and to take down independent voices like ours here at The Remnant, just as they're now taking down small business in order to reset the world economy. The pattern has always been the same. And they were after independent journalists a long time ago. And look what's happening right now. Now that COVID hysteria has forced the entire world to go online, whether to educate your children, entertain yourselves, go to work, whatever. We're all online now. That's the new normal, you know? And now who, what happens but this techno-fascist Klaus Schwab of the World Economic Forum, he comes out and he starts issuing dire warnings that the new normal's digital infrastructure is under global threat of cyber attack. <laughs> what a shock. Our reliance on digital services and infrastructure has exponentially increased due to the unprecedented connectivity which we have established now. From the adoption of large-scale working from home arrangements to the use of cloud services, e-commerce, e-health, e-education. 
We all know, but still pay insufficient attention to the frightening scenario of a comprehensive cyber attack. You see how it works? So here they come again, another big scare tactic, cyber attack. <laughs> oh, man, and this is why, by the way, this is why here at The Remnant, we never let our physical newspaper be swallowed up by these guys. We never said, well, we'll just take 50 years of a newspaper and hand it to Klaus Schwab and Zuckerberg and these guys and let them, you know, be, be the custodians of, our, of our, our independent journalistic voice. Of course not. We never did that. So at the moment and in the future, the remnant is not, nor will it be controlled by anyone, not Facebook, not Twitter, you know, not even advertisers. We're not into advertising so much. We're into selling subscriptions the old fashioned way. We got a product. It's a good product. And that's what we do here. Just this week, a generous donor who I had never met before, a guy way out on the West Coast offered to match dollar for dollar donations received donations to the remnant received until december 31st of 2020 up to twenty five thousand dollars. that's a lot of money for us if we can double that that's a ton of money that's going to keep us very independent from whatever else they got planned as far as silencing the remnant silencing conservatism in the in the near future so let's do this thing with this match fund just click the link in the description box below donate whatever you can right now and let's keep on keeping on I mean, really, there's, there's a war to be fought, and you know this. We can't let independent Christian voices in media be silenced as they want to silence us. We cannot let that happen. Now, you see the craziness going on. You just check out this. Uh, everybody's been talking about it. I can't not say something about the Vatican's nativity scene. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. What, what, what in the world? You know, it's pretty funny. I mean, <laughs> no I think we got a little clip. Let's just take a, take a look at a little bit of it and uh, enjoy it. Whatever. You know what, guys? As the kids say, I ain't even mad about this. And I really, really hope, Pope Francis, <laughs> I really hope somehow you see this because I got, I got a message for you. This doesn't make me upset at all. This is actually such good news. Your nativity set, it makes my day. You see, because for my entire career and my father's career before me, we've been trying to make the case that the Vatican now has been infiltrated by folks who are modernist, wacko, globalists. We've been trying to make this case, and it was hard. It was hard for a long time to convince people of this. And I'm happy to say that no one has done a better job making that case that something has gone terribly wrong than this guy Francis. I mean, he's so good at making the case now that we might call him God's troll because <laughs> this troll is defending the indefensible, is doing the craziest stuff now. And people are waking up en masse all over the place as to the, to the, to the fact that there has been a massive revolution in the Catholic Church. You know, Pope Francis is pandering to the globalists, has literally now decimated the ranks of the liberals in the Catholic Church, the neo-Catholics, we used to call them. They're, they hardly even exist anymore because everybody's becoming a traditionalist over here. He's decimated their ranks because you have to actually be high right now not to see what is going on with this fellow. Something happened in the Vatican in the last months that has been largely overlooked. The high altar of St. Peter's, the papal altar, which is situated right on top of the tomb of St. Peter himself, has been left unused now for many months. Professor Armin Schweibeck, a Vatican correspondent who has lived in Rome for more than three decades, describes it as a symbolic emptiness. This fact comes in light of the lockdowns, but also after Pope Francis, in October of 2019, welcomed a bowl with earth dedicated to the false goddess Pachamama and placed it on that very altar. 
You see, and he is the reason why the ranks of the Catholic counter-revolution are swelling all over the world. You've got millions of people going to the traditional Latin Mass now, all over the world. He is the reason why Protestants and Catholics, and I know a lot of you guys out there are Protestants, and as I said last time, I appreciate you being here because we're having constructive conversations about real truth, real Christianity. Francis is the reason we can have these conversations. Francis is the reason why Protestants and Catholics are coming together now against the globalists, against the New World Order, because Francis has put the lie to the false ecumenical gobbledygook of Vatican II. It was never... It was never about bringing anyone to Christianity. It was always about syncretism. It was always now politically about globalism. Get the Catholic Church out of the way and set up this globalist government, this globalist church, whatever it is that they have in mind. And this nativity set, in my opinion, is only, is only another step along the way of making people realize, yep, we can no longer defend the indefensible that's going on in Rome right now. So guess what, Your Holiness? Carry on. You really seriously are doing a bang-up job. And as this year draws to a close, we here at the, at the Remnant would like to make an important announcement. You're hearing it here first. The Remnant Newspaper's 2020 Man of the Year is none other than Pope Francis. So keep talking, Francis. Please, for God's sake, keep, keep talking because you're really waking a lot of people up, and we're grateful to God for that. Speaking of psycho-globalists, Francis's pal, I'm going to close on this, running a little long tonight, but Francis's pal, who's now financing his latest education stunt, we'll go into that next week, his pal Bill Gates says that vaccine or no, the worst of the COVID pandemic is yet to come. When do you think life will fully return to what we thought of as normal? back in January. No masks, no social distancing, uh, no other protective measures necessary. Certainly by the summer, we'll be way closer to normal than we are now. But even through early 2022, so we'll have, starting in the summer, about nine months where a few things like big public gatherings uh, will still be restricted. But you know, we can see now that somewhere between 12 to 18 months, and we have a chance if we manage it well uh, to get back to normal. Imagine that. Yeah, it's pretty, 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 because these guys are the experts, so they must know. I, yeah, you know, yeah, it's pretty yeah. fun. In the UK, they're saying that a new and more deadly strain of COVID is cropping up just in time to cancel Christmas. What a coincidence, these, these, uh, these little outbursts mm -hmm. of COVID, yeah. Given the early evidence we have on this new variant of the virus, the potential risk it poses, uh, it is with a very heavy heart, I must tell you, we cannot continue with Christmas as planned. They're going to keep bringing this thing back bigger, better, scarier than ever, every time, unless we simply stop caring about it. Unless we find a way to overcome the fear of, of COVID and go out and shout from the housetops, actually, to hell with COVID. We're done with it. You know? They keep telling us, so you got to do all this stuff. You got to shut down again. Another economic lockdown. You got to cancel it because you're going to die or somebody's going to die. Better shut down the world. Better shut down the economy. Grandma's going to die. You know? Well, guess what, guys? I don't care. You know, I mean, during the first round of COVID, what is it now, almost a year ago? These experts, <laughs> it's just, you know, the experts imposed draconian lockdowns on us all, and it didn't work. Remember that? They knocked down every possible therapeutic, and then they went into trillions of dollars worth of debt, you know, to, to, uh, to deal with this problem. And now, oh boy, they're putting together a bipartisan stimulus package. And I'm just simply happy to say that as we enter the holiday season, when so many people are worried about how they're going to pay their bills, whether they're going to get evicted, whether they're going to feed their kids, at least, at least, among other things, there'll be $600 per adult and five, or at $600 per child as well. Who is it? Who is it that actually, when your whole life is destroyed, is going to be placated and satisfied when they send you a check for a thousand bucks? 
This is so insulting to say nothing of the redistribution of wealth. Now, de Blasio is out in New York saying it's his job to redistribute the wealth, but we're going to get a check and that's going to do it. The trouble is, again, I'm not feeling particularly stimulated. Are you? Yeah, that check is going to make much of a difference, you know, now that everything has gone completely insane in our world. We can't even celebrate Christmas. Not feeling so stimulated. In fact, when it comes to that stimulus check. I don't care. And now it turns out again that the pandemic is not going to go away, even if we all get vaccinated with the vaccination. That what What is it? Uh, about six months worth of research went into that. <laughs> Yeah, and and they're yeah. saying they're saying they're going to give it to the minorities first, black people, brown people, whatever, before white people, because white people don't matter so much. And I'm just thinking in this case, and I'm nothing against our black brothers. I know they're just as skeptical as we are about this vaccine, but I want to show that you know I'm going to check my white privilege at the door. So when it comes to this vaccine, I'm going to yeah. go to the back of the line, baby. I really am. I have had too much. I've had too much in my life, and I don't want to be first in line to get the prick. You know, so. I'm going to set an example. I won't take this thing. Like maybe down the road, a couple, two, three, five years from now, if there's a little bit of that vaccine left, maybe then I'll, I'll, I'll take some, you know, but I want to make sure everybody else gets it first. That's the way I, no. that's the way I kind of roll. But anyway, it's not going to do much anyway, according to the experts, uh, Dr. Fauci, field, field Marshal Fauci, of course, he tells us that we're still going to have to mask up social distance and wash those hands even after we get vaccinated. Here's Field Marshal Fauci that even if you are vaccinated, it is recommended that you follow the public health recommendations of wearing a mask, staying distant, avoiding congregate settings and crowds, and washing your hands often. So you could get infected and have absolutely no symptoms, but you might have virus in your nasal pharynx. Virus in my nasal pharynx? My nasal pharynx? Really, Tony? I mean, that's awful. I, I, I'm terrified. I'm that, Anything but that nasal pharynx virus. It'll bloom in there. It says, man, that is scary stuff. But here's the thing, Tony, about the virus blooming in my nasal pharynx. I don't care. I'm sorry. I've run out of rips to give. I seriously don't give a rip anymore. I don't care. And in all seriousness, everybody has to die of something. Dr. Fauci, seriously, nobody cares. Go down to Cancun, work on your tan, do whatever it is guys like you do, but we're moving on. In fact, we're launching dump -a, -bum, a brand new hashtag. Hashtag to hell with COVID. If we stop being afraid, friends, and we go back to life, the new normal is over. And you got to tell people about this. You got to talk to them. You got to explain what's going on here before it's too late. And the, and the good news is so many people are waking up. Last week, for example, we called upon our bishops and cardinals to stand and resist what's happening. And this week, God bless him, Raymond Cardinal Burke did just that. Then there is the mysterious Wuhan virus about whose nature and prevention the mass media daily give us conflicting information. What is clear, however, is that it has been used by certain forces inimical to families and to the freedom of nations to advance their evil agenda. These forces tell us that we are now the subjects of the so-called Great Reset, the new normal, which is dictated to us by their manipulation of citizens and nations through ignorance and fear. Now we are supposed to find in a disease and its prevention the way to understand and direct our lives rather than in God and in, and, and in his plan for our salvation. Feels pretty good, doesn't it? When you hear sanity like that, when you hear actual spiritual leadership like that, when you hear something Catholic for a change versus the swill coming out of Pope Francis half the time, 
and even the president of the United States, Fred, this is Christmas. I'm positive. I'm very happy about the way things are going in terms of uniting the clans and folks waking up all over the world. Even the president of the United States is reminding the world that it's time to turn back to Christ. At Christmas, we give thanks to God and that God sent his only son to die for us and to offer everlasting peace to all humanity. Above all, during the sacred season, our souls are full of thanks and praise for Almighty God for sending us Christ, His Son, to redeem the world. Tonight, we ask that God will continue to bless this nation, and we pray that He will grant every American family a Christmas season full of joy, hope, and peace. When is the last time anyone saw a world leader stand up and say those things about Jesus Christ, much less the re leader of the free world, the president of the United States? This is why I'm saying there is a lot. There, there, we have reason to be very confident, to be very hopeful, despite everything going so bad right now with our globalist friends and the situation with the, with the election and everything else. People are waking up. And that's what we've been trying to cause, we've been praying for, for 50 years, that people would wake up. And I've never, ever seen so many millions of people waking up right now, you know? This is why, you know, they're, they're growing desperate, I think, the folks on the other side of the line. They're growing desperate. They're jumping whole schools of hammerhead sharks right now because they really realize that we're coming alive over here and we're done, you know? Their stupid New World Order plans are alienating millions of people. The leaders of this band of globalist fools are amongst the most loathed people in the world. You know, the cartoonish Bill Gates, the fascist Fauci, that stupid German guy straight from central casting. I mean, you know, you Google, you know, memes, Bill Gates. I mean, this is really a hated guy. People can't stand this guy, you know. We've all had enough. And whatever happens in January, the largest pro-God, pro-life, pro-Christian populist movement in the world is going to be mobilized. <laughs> it's going to be a force to be reckoned with, friends. And Joe Biden, if he gets in, is going to be a lame duck. I mean, can you imagine trying to fill the shoes of Donald Trump? Whatever you think of Donald Trump. Can you come out there? He dominates the news cycle 24-7, you know, year in and year out. Then it comes little Joe Biden, this little guy. It's going to be funny. It's going to be a, it's going to be a dumpster fire. You know, and if, he, and if Biden is ever sworn in, it's going to be the most ridiculous president in history. I mean, really, I give Saturday Night Live like one month before it's open season on this clown. So, you know, be of good cheer, friends. There's a, there's a war to be fought. People are waking up. This is not going to be a slam dunk, okay? We're, all, we're healthy. We're ready to go. We're waking up. We're ready to fight. This is good. And now Christmas is here again. Merry Christmas. Happy Advent. The whole thing. One week till Jesus is born again. They can't stop that. They can't stop us from celebrating his birth, right? We've survived 2020, the worst year any of us can ever remember. And we're stronger and more united than ever. And honestly, I look forward to fighting alongside of you in the trenches in 2021. You know, because again, for me, it's just such a pleasant change of pace to have so many allies, so many friends who know exactly what has to be done. You know, the enemies of Christ have got nothing but lies to sell the world right now, you know, because they serve the father of lies. And we, on the other hand, have kept the faith despite their best efforts to drive it out of our midst. And they know it. They know we've kept the faith. They know they failed to intimidate us and they fear us for that, you know? which is why they're trying to intimidate us and silence us and bully us and their stupid little social media. <laughs> we don't need their social media anymore. We're moving beyond that. We're uniting against them. Don't ever forget that. They're afraid of us. Because again, Christianity will always come roaring back. So this is Christmas. Let's re resolve, friends, to stay strong. Maybe even to laugh in the face of these demons as we go to war for Christ the King on his birthday and throughout the new year. I'm looking forward to that challenge. God bless you. Merry Christmas. I'm Michael Matt from Remnant TV, and we'll see you next week.